Hey guys, this is a Matty Ice How To today, and we are going to be taking my old Dell 6520. So, what are we going to be doing to this laptop today? Our main goals today are going to be to upgrade the RAM and replace the hard drive with from a traditional mechanical drive with this new 120 gigabyte SSD that I got on Black Friday. You might be asking yourself why I'm doing this. I do want to work on this laptop and do work from home. Uh, maybe use it for some internet browsing or as a second computer. I do like this computer. It's very durable. I bought this, I believe, in 2011 or 2012, so it's been quite a few years. It's at least six years old, and it's performed well. I have not used this in three years. I'm going to try and use this again. It was always a good laptop. It made a lot of uh, sense to me at the time I purchased it because these Latitude series, the, the E6, 65s, and 64 series, had a lot of neat features. One of the things that drew me to this was the magnesium construction on the outside. It has a decent keyboard. The other benefit to these 65s is that they have a lot of interchangeability right here. Uh, for example, this is uh, our DVD drive. They had these in mind for people who wanted to expand these, or if you didn't need an optical drive in here, for example, push this little button, out comes your optical drive. You can see it's just a bay right there. You can actually run this with dual hard drive and they do have other accessories that you can add on to here. So, and then it came with a decent amount of ports for the time. For 2011, this came with HDMI, your standard USBs, 1394 port, and then we had some external ports for doing like uh, cards. You could have this cellular card in here. On the other side, we've got a display port We've got your headphones, which I've never liked the placement of that. It was always awkward to me. I never felt like they were long enough. Another USB, and then on the back, we have a USB, but this one's kind of like off-centered slightly. And then we've got, this is our power. And then back here, this is a telephone um, port. And then there's your Cat5. So it had a lot of ports, and then this also has that expansion on the bottom. So let's see if we can't resurrect this. It does still function and power up, and I just put Windows 10 on it on a clean boot on the hard drive. And the mechanical hard drive works, but man, this thing's painfully slow. We're talking like two minutes to actually get this thing spinning up and you know ready to go to the Windows load screen. Now, first thing we're going to be working with is going to be our SSD, so we're going to move the RAM off to the side for now. Okay, it's a crucial. It's a 120 gigabyte. It's just a standard SSD. Nothing fancy here. It's literally just standard SATA SSD. And this will fit directly into the cage, so we shouldn't have too many problems. So, hard drive is going to be in this caddy right here. This is not a quick release one. You do have to remove a couple screws in the bottom right here. There's four total. So, the first thing you want to do is disconnect your battery by pushing those two tabs. Come on. There we go. That's it. That's the original Dell battery. We're safe to work on this now. So if we're taking out this SSD, what we're first going to want to do is just grab a micro screwdriver. These are just all Phillips head. Okay, so we've got our four screws right there. We're going to keep those by themselves. And then all you have to do is pull this out. I thought when I bought this, it was supposed to be a 250 gigabyte uh, Toshiba drive, but apparently this is a 320 Seagate. But it's still a functioning drive. I'll keep it in case I ever do want to like make an expansion on here. I can buy the caddy for that and this will be like a bulk backup drive. Okay, so all you have to do is take off these little caddy wings right here. These, uh, are ca that's one screw on here and then these wings pop off. And this is what holds it in place. So you do need this part. So we're just going to take our one screw out of the side right here. We're gonna set that down on the table so we don't lose it. it. Pops right off. All we do is just mates up like that. You kind of have to like work with it a little bit. Okay, and we're just screwing this little thing back on. There we go. And that's it. She's connected back up. So now all we have to do is reinsert. Congratulations guys, you've just replaced the hard drive. We need to get to RAM, so since that's not everything that we're doing, we're going to take that out and leave it out for now since we're doing a little bit more modification. To get to the RAM, we do have to remove the back panel. And that's just a series of screws. All you do is take all these screws right here. Alright, 
come on. If they give you a little bit of trouble when they're coming out, sometimes you just have to flip it over. All right, so we'll give it a quick little shake. It's still kind of stuck in there, and then we'll uh, wait for it to pop out. It should just take a little, you know, padding on there. Oh, there we go. I felt it. Okay, and there it comes. You just want to tap it lightly and get her to come up. If you get like a little something on here to help you, there it goes. All right. Oh, guys, look at all that dust in there. Okay. Oh, man, look at it. We got some uh, stickers coming off. They've been in here so long. It's actually not as dirty as I thought it would be. We've got four gigabytes in here. These we're going to pop out and replace them with our new RAM. So replacing the RAM is very simple. You've got these little tabs over here and all you're going to do is pull on your tabs and it pops up. And then you just carefully pull outwards. Same process down here. It's these little silver tabs here on the side. Um, there's a top row and a bottom row. And then it's kind of like releasing RAM in a desktop. There you go. It, if you saw that, it rose right up. Then you just gently rock her out and pull away from the board. So here is the old RAM that we are replacing. I wonder what the frequency was. It's 1147. And the new stuff that's going in is going to be running at 1067. So it's slightly lower frequency but it is a much higher capacity it's double so we're doubling the capacity on here so to put in this new ram all you're going to do is take this little slot right here line it up there it goes so i just slid that in and it slides down and then when you've done it correctly you just will allow you to gently lay it down and these tabs will engage so if I were to pull these tabs, it would pop back up. That's how you know you have it in there correctly. And you can't install this stuff backwards. It does have a slot right here to indicate which direction this needs to be installed. So if your slot doesn't line up, like if I were to try and install it backwards, it wouldn't let me. I'd be hitting a bar right there. So you can't really mess this up. All right, same process for the top for our second slot. This is just getting inserted just like that. And then we're gently pushing down until it engages. And we know it's in there right because it pops back up and it is fully engaged. So that's it for installing the RAM. Do you see how difficult that was? That took maybe, you know, a minute, two minutes because I was screwing around with it. Now we're just going to be, since there's nothing else we need to do back here at this time, we're going to be putting this back on. Okay, so to reinstall it, all we're going to do is be pushing down, and it should just start clipping into place. You do seem to have to push on this a little bit to get the lineup perfectly and go back on like that. It does clip back on very easily, and it's not difficult to work on like some other computers. Okay, so let's start putting our screws back in. We're just going to go kind of backwards. All right guys, so we've reinstalled the back plate and everything clipped down fine. You know, everything still works, our battery releases work. If these are giving you trouble, they're not going like down all the way or they're, one of them's like stuck, push down on the front of the cover right here. The corners sometimes stick. Now we're going to reinsert our expandable. And again, this is just as simple as taking it, sliding it in and then pushing that to lock it in. Okay, so reinsert that and then it should just clip right into place very easily. Not a whole lot going on there. Okay, those are hand snug. Last thing we want to do is reinstall the battery, which just slides right into place, click. All right guys, so we have everything on here now, and if we've done it correctly, we should be able to power this up. So let me out a little bit so you can see. And let's see if it actually boots up. It's a lot quieter, I can tell you that much. Okay guys, and there's the boot screen. Now I don't have anything installed yet on here, so it's going to detect a blank drive. 
as you can see, it's it's coming up with the, you know, you have to run setup. So it did work. We do have an SSD card in me right here. This is also a confirmation that we have changed the system memory. If you can see on there, it's saying invalid configuration. We have to run setup. That's because we installed a new drive. And then at the bottom right there, it's telling you that we have a amount of memory change. That means the RAM changed. Just to give you an idea of how this is working, if you look right here, memory installed, we got 8192. But as you can see, here's our RAM. We got 4096 uh, on A and 4096 on B. And then here's our processor information, 2.2 gigahertz on that I3. And then here at the bottom, it's detecting our new drive because this is a 120 gigabyte uh, SSD in there. So everything's working so far. And then uh, let's come back after I finish the boot and install Windows and we'll show you how quickly this thing loads now. All right, guys, we just finished installing Windows, and the only other thing I did was install Google Chrome on here because that's the web browser I use. So uh, let's show you how quickly this thing boots up now. This used to take two minutes to go from the Dell screen to full boot up. As you can see, we're already launching Windows 10. Loading up. And we're already at the login screen. That is how quick an SSD can make this computer. That is absolutely astounding. I think this is a well, you know, worthwhile upgrade for anyone looking to make an old laptop useful. Um, just to show you how fast it is, here's my Google Chrome that I just installed. We'll open that up. And there you go, right to google.com, quick load. It did not take very long at all. Now, if we want to play around and see how well this RAM's working, we can try and load some of the more you know, intensive websites. Let's go to like CNN.com, for example. It's a pretty standard website, but they have a lot of videos on there and a lot of articles. There we go. CNN loaded. That didn't take long at all. Even all the ads are popping up. Look at that. All of it is loaded up, guys. Google Chrome's a very RAM intensive. Uh, web browser so it often slows down devices when you open multiple tabs because it, it keeps every tab open. Let's go to MSNBC. Okay, we'll open up their main web page too. Oh, George Bush. Oh, he just died. That's sad. Okay, here it goes. Look at all those videos we got. We got all our ads. It's all loading super fast thanks to that 8 gigabytes of RAM we got in here. Now going hardcore here, let's open up another heavy website. Let's go to fox.com. Now I did not go to their news one because I want to try and load the videos and see how quickly, you know, their video content is loading on here. And we've even got their embedded players running in the background. I do have the sound turned down right now. That is amazing. An SSD and two new RAM sticks have turned this laptop from a slow outdated laptop into something that's quite usable now it'll do word processing it'll do web browsing it'll do all the basic functions you need of a laptop guys thanks for watching this video if you like my tech reviews and my you know how to's for technology and tools leave a like or comment below and let me know what you think if you think i could be doing something better or different you can send me suggestions in the comments as well thanks for watching guys have a great night